Hey everyone, it's VM Campos Comic Book Fan. Welcome to the weekly VM Campos Comic Book Club. This is the series where I answer the question, what am I reading this week? For the audio version of the podcast, head on over to your favorite podcasting apps. Search for VM Campos and subscribe. I'm at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, all your favorite places. This week I'm reading Bone Number 1 from Image Comics, published in 1995. Now, spoiler alert, I will be going through the various pages of this book, but I will not reveal the whole plot. You're encouraged to buy the original book yourself and enjoy it. Please support your local comic shops, your favorite creators and companies. It's really worth it. This is the series where I review a comic book new or old from my collection in the following dimensions. Cover art, interior art, plot, and enjoyability on a scale of 1 to 5. Let's get started. So I've got issue number one of Jeff Smith's Bone, published by Image Comics. Wait a minute, published by Image Comics? Well, if you know anything about the history of this comic, it was the darling of the 90s, self-published by Jeff Smith, written, penciled, inked, published, distributed by Jeff Smith at his Cartoon Books publishing company. Between 1991 and 1995, Jeff Smith did it all himself out of cartoon books, him and his wife actually. Then in 1995, he made an arrangement with Image Comics. And so this is a reprint of issue number one, but with Image Comics, with bigger distribution and so forth. That's a little bit of history about this comic. Also, fun fact, I met Jeff Smith at a Comic-Con one time. Um, I was trying to get him to sign one of my uh, Bone books, but he couldn't quite do it at the moment because he uh, was holding a burrito and he had to go to his next panel. So, oh, okay, next time. The story behind this book is basically that um, we've got this sort of uh, high fantasy comedic adventure starring the Bone Cousins. We'll get to them in a moment. The cover features Phone Bone, the main character, and a, um, a character that you don't know until you read the book a little bit, but that's the, uh, the Great Red Dragon. And it's a very moody sort of cover. You've got the beautiful Bone logo. It's very memorable. It's the same sort of logo that's been around for going on almost 30 years. We've got Phone Bone uh, wandering the wilderness before he gets to the valley. We'll get to that later. And uh, it's nighttime, beautiful stars in the back. There's the moon up there. It's a pretty enjoyable cover. Um, I kind of like the original cartoon books cover a little bit better. So comparing it, I'll give this a four out of five. The original cover is much more interesting, much more whimsical, I think. This is a little bit too foreboding. And it's technically done pretty well. Um, the colorization is nice, composition is interesting. You've got this um, foreground, middle ground, and background element to look at, plus the beautiful sky. But I'll give it a 4 out of 5, because I like the original cover a little bit better. The interior art. Okay, first of all, it's in black and white. Bone, for most of its run, was in black and white. You can go off and read the whole history about it, that it was published by Cartoon Books originally in black and white color covers. It went on to Image, it got reprinted by Scholastic in color. It ended up as a 1,332 page long epic that was published um, for uh, various markets. And so interiors are black and white. You might already see the influences of Walt Kelly's Pogo. You have this very cartoony sort of style, cartoon books, get it? And there's actually also a lot of detail to the books. There's a locust invasion that uh, must have been uh, kind of difficult to draw. There's just so many locusts and there's a panel just full of locusts. Besides that, there's like this great wilderness. There's uh, caves um, and forests that we get to eventually. And there's a beautiful sense of timing and pace. Panel layouts are really good. I really like the interior art. I'll give it a five out of five. I remember reading a, uh, an interview, an early interview with Jeff Smith saying that he was going to set the, uh, the story in like a, you know, a real city and such, but he was going to beat himself up too much by drawing too much detail. But then he ended up setting it up in a wilderness and such with still a lot of detail, drawing every single branch and leaf and everything. So I really appreciate the quality of Smith's work. There is a great page that is basically six panels 
Uh, three of them are horizontal, three of them are vertical. They create this beautiful sense of time and space where Phone Bone is running for his life because the locust swarm is just uh, attacking him. And then he ends up falling off of a cliff. And there's a beautiful sense of time of him falling off of that cliff and then landing on a sandy bar, which then he gets up and remarks, yeah, I can't believe I wasn't just killed. Uh, the same interview said that he, that had actually happened to Smith when he was young, that he fell off a cliff, but he landed on a sandy bar and he didn't die. Great, because then he wouldn't have been able to go off and make this book. So very enjoyable art. Very enjoyable story. It's a very slow story published in 55 issues from 1991 to 2004, bi-monthly, sporadically, in color, in black and white, in various publishers. And um, there's adventure, there's intrigue, there's magic, there's comedy, there's drama. Very enjoyable story. That's a five out of five. There's a little bit of everything for everyone to enjoy. Like I said, adventure, comedy. There are various visual jokes that are just beautiful. There are panels that are completely black because it's, it's dark. Flashes of light. And we get a sense of time and pace in these panels. Great story. The enjoyability is also very high. In this particular book, issue number one, however, I'll give it a four out of five because there's a lot of questing, a lot of adventuring. It's not quite going anywhere until the final pages of the first issue. And that's fine because eventually it becomes a big, long epic that comes together in 1300 pages. Smith has said, I wanted to do an adventure story that was like the Odyssey or the Iliad, a thousand pages of a cartoon character. And he reached it, 55 issues, 1300 pages, multiple printings throughout the decades. It really is his magnum opus. This first particular book, the enjoyability of it is a little bit lower than other particular stories, just because it, everything's kind of trying to get into place. Who are the characters? Um, what are their personalities? Who are these rat creatures? They seem pretty stupid. What about that dragon? He's supposed to be red, but it's in black and white, I can't tell. And then the very end, which again, I won't fully spoil, read it, read it yourself. Uh, it just is a to be continued sort of thing and things are built up pretty slowly. But overall, it's a very enjoyable book, so I like it. Side note, this is actually the newsstand edition, as uh, you can tell by this barcode here. So this was published in uh, January 1995. As such, it's a little bit more beat up than I would like it to be. Uh, the black tones of the cover have suffered a little bit, but you know, newsstand comics, especially in the 90s, never really fared that well. And image comics on the newsstands were kind of a rarity. Uh, image was more about the direct market uh, comic shops. So when you pick up uh, any barcoded image comic, it's worth a little bit more than the direct edition version. Now the back cover also features the original art for Bone Number no. 1, first print. So that's the one that I like a little bit more than this reprint from Image. Again, fanciful, interesting, it shows the three main characters. Phone Bone, Fonsible P Bone, and Smiley Bone. Plus some critters in the background ready to get them. So that was Bone Number no. 1, Newsstand Edition, published by Image Comics in 1995. Don't forget to check out the audio-only version of the podcast at your favorite podcasting apps. Google Play, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, everywhere. Just search VM Campos and subscribe. So this week I read Bone Number no. 1, Newsstand Variant Edition, published by Image Comics in 1995. This has been the weekly VM Campos Comic Book Club, and I'll see you next week.